Hey everybody, it's Cybo. I know you guys usually like to see DLC speculation videos, which is probably how you find my channel, but I asked what type of other content you would like to see from Jurassic World Evolution 2, and a lot of y'all said deals. so I decided to start implementing those into the channel as well. But don't worry, I'll still be doing DLC speculation videos. Now, before we get started, let's start our Jurassic Park trivia. Number 1. What dinosaur gave the Indominus Rex its size? Okay. If you guys want to find out if you are right or wrong, make sure to stay till the end of the video to find out. We will be revealing all the answers. Now, my idea for this park is that we're going to try to revolve this park around different continents. I'm going to try and split this park up into different sections, all being themed after their specific continents with their own color combinations. Like, for example, red being Europe, orange being Africa, Asia being pink, etc. Stuff like that. Antarctica really doesn't have enough species to warrant its own area, as we only have one species from there, that being the unique crest-wielding Crylophosaurus. Frontier should really consider adding more Antarctican species? species from Antarctica to the game, which eventually is going to be a video, so make sure to keep your notifications on and stay tuned for that. But a good amount of species were located in multiple continents, so I will try to limit those species to one area in our park. But today's episode, we will be building the entrance of our park and a few enclosures. I'm more of a challenge mode and campaign player myself, and with the extremely short campaign that this game had, I usually play challenge mode and chaos theory. Now, chaos theory was kind of my replacement for campaign in this game. In Jurassic World Evolution 1, the campaign was pretty long in my opinion. I played that for a while. But with Jurassic World Evolution 2, the campaign was very short and felt incomplete. I thought that the Dominion DLC would add more to the campaign, but sadly that never happened. So, to replace it, I played Chaos Theory, and that took me a while to beat and get 5 stars on every single mode. But after that, I played Challenge Mode. Now, I know challenge mode is not for everyone, and a lot of people don't even want to play it, and that's okay, but I enjoy being challenged and restricted by the game. When you first start off challenge mode, it is incredibly difficult to even get one star, but the more you play it, the better you get at it, and eventually, you will be able to beat even the most difficult challenge, Jurassic Challenge Mode. I have personally beat every Jurassic Challenge Mode in this game. And the last game, just because I enjoy racing to 5 stars and trying to beat my own personal best, and trying to beat the odds. But what is your opinion on all the modes? Which do you like better? Campaign? Chaos Theory? Sandbox? Challenge mode? Make sure to leave your thoughts in the comments below. But circling back to Sandbox, I like Sandbox, it's just that I really don't see an incentive to play it, as at least in challenge mode, you have unlockable skins that you get from beating Jurassic difficulty on each map. But Sandbox is kind of hard for me to gain inspiration and patience to make something incredible. I'm not an Evolution Square. She dominates the park building section of both Jurassic World Evolution games. But when I get started and laid out a good and strong foundation for my park, I feel the need to continue to build it and continue until I've perfected and completed it. And that is what I plan to do with this park. But brief pause. Let's put our next Jurassic Park trivia question on the screen. Number two, is Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous Hidden Adventure canon to the Jurassic franchise? But let's continue. Now, the next topic I would like to discuss is whether or not Jurassic World Evolution 2 is going to be supported past 2023. Now, most of us know the financial report that says that Jurassic World Evolution 2 will be receiving support throughout 2023. And personally, I think that means we'll be getting three more DLCs at the minimum. One in June, one in September, and finally one in December. Many people believe that that will be it and JWoo 2 will stop being supported and it will not be supported into 2024 and beyond. I feel like this will probably be true, but a part of me thinks that the game will be supported past 2023. Planet Zoo has been supported for around four years and I feel like Frontier could continue to support the game for that long if not longer. But due to the fact that they have to deal with Universal and gain all the rights and deal with copyright, I feel like that will get in the way of this game's longevity. Jurassic World Evolution 2, one of the most successful Frontier games, only behind the original Jurassic World Evolution. 
The amount of DLCs they could add for this game is ridiculous. It could easily be supported for another 5 years. Now, one of the reasons JW1 stopped being supported was due to the fact that Frontier was developing JW2. I don't think we'll be getting a JW3, so that's not going to get in the way of JW2's development. So maybe we will still see more DLCs in 2024. But for now, let's focus on 2023. We have to live in the present. Now, question 3 for our Jurassic Park trivia. What dinosaur was kept hidden from the public during Jurassic Park the game? Now, let's speak on attractions, shall we? I think most of us, if not all of us, can agree that this game needs more attractions as of right now. We only really have variations of viewing platforms and viewing galleries. Now, I'm not saying that the viewing log and viewing dome are bad. I love them. They are really good. I'm glad they were added. But we need more theme park attractions. Roller coasters, merry-go-rounds, ferris wheels, stuff like that. As I always say, Jurassic Park was a theme park, not a zoo. And right now, our parks feel like zoos. The zipline was a really good attraction that they added. And if they add more attractions like that, the game will improve significantly. I wouldn't be surprised if we get more attractions in future updates, as in JW2's anniversary, we got the zipline, and now in update 6, we got the viewing log and the viewing dome. But some attractions that would be nice to see in updates would be a rivet tour, a roller coaster, ferris wheel, etc. Now, number 4. What Jurassic Park media did the Ultimasaurus originate from? But let's continue the discussion and speak on hybrids. As many of you guys know, you guys have probably seen my video, Possible Hybrid Expansion. But the problem with that expansion is that not everyone likes hybrids. Hybrids are very split in the community, not just in the Jurassic World Evolution 2 community, but in the entire Jurassic World community, including the books, toys, and literally everything you can think of for this Jurassic franchise. Many people don't like hybrids due to the fact that they weren't actual animals that existed. And I understand that. But the thing with hybrids is, you can make them look however you want. The possibilities are endless. It's almost impossible to not give a hybrid a distinguishing fe feature. As long as it's not ridiculous, as many of you guys know, the cancelled Jurassic Park show, Jurassic Park Chaos Effect, did have a three-headed T-Rex if I was correct. It also, had, it also had a bunch of other hybrids. But the fact is that I feel like a hybrid expansion would be likely if we had more time or just a hybrid pack if currently right now i think that we're only gonna get three more dlcs one of them being a manticorp dlc one of them being a 30th anniversary dlc or a novel dlc and the last one i don't know being just maybe like a jurassic or triassic pack or something like that but if we only have three dlcs left there's really not enough room for a hybrid dlc unless that pack that I was speaking of is a hybrid pack. But I feel like to do justice for hybrids, they need to have their own DLC. And if JW2 is still being developed and worked on in 2024, I am willing to bet that we will get a second hybrid DLC like we did during the Secrets of Dr. Wu in, the, in Jurassic World Evolution 1. I know people don't like them, but I like them. They're really cool. The Spinoraptor, Ankylodocus, Stegoceratops, those three dinosaurs are still missing from the game and should be added in eventually. They should be added for free. Don't make us pay for the same animal twice like you did with the Huayangasaurus, if not mistaken, in the Deluxe Dinosaur Pack. I feel like that's one of the reasons Frontier brought back every single species, even like the most miscellaneous ones like Polycanthus, Sauropelta, Gigant, Spinosaurus, those species, Frontier is a very honest company. They listen to us. This update and every single update that has come out has been amazing, some more than others, but they are very honest and I'm glad for that. They wouldn't want us to pay more money for the species that we had in the first game. Those three species should be added back for free if we ever do get a hybrid DLC or at some point in this game's lifespan. All three of those dinosaurs are heavily wanted. Ever since JW2 was first announced, people have been extremely mad that they weren't added. And I am still somewhat disappointed that those three haven't been added. 
that I know Frontier and I feel like they will eventually give us back those three species. But that's my take. What do you guys think of hybrids? Now, our final question. What island is known as Site C in Jurassic World Evolution? Now, let us discuss our newest DLC, the Feathered Species Pack. I'm not gonna lie with you guys. After like mid-March, I was getting very worried that Frontier just stopped working on Jurassic World Evolution 2. But thankfully, my worries were put to rest when the Feathered Species Pack was announced. I'm pretty sure the only reason it took a while for the update and DLC to be announced was just due to the fact that how feathers work and how annoying they are to deal with. And for species, that's very difficult. And update 6 had a lot of stuff, had a bunch of new maps, mixed foliage, new attractions, it had a bunch of stuff. And I understand why Frontier delivered this stuff a little bit late. but. The Feathered Species Pack added two heavily requested dinos, the Dinochirus and the Eutyranus. I mentioned them in my Asia expansion video, and I'm just glad that they got in, and that the Dinochirus is, is a Herbivore Episcopal. Eutyranus is a very fluffy boy, and I'm very glad he got in. Geholopterus and Sinusoraptorix, I'm also glad they got in, but personally, me and probably a good amount of the community would have preferred Utah Raptor over the Sinusoraptorix, but that's okay. Now, the reason I was so worried that Frontier stopped developing for Jurassic World Evolution 2 was due to the fact that during Jurassic World Evolution 1, after the return to Jurassic Park in December, they stopped developing and working on that game entirely, and I was worried that the Malta expansion was similar as they were both released in December. So. I was worried that they just stopped working on the game, but thankfully, I was wrong. What do you guys think of the topics that I discussed today? And here are the answers to the 5 questions, and from the looks of it, we're going to receive more DLCs throughout the year, and I'm just very glad. But that's it for me. I will see you guys next week.